Good, so we are about to open up the moth trap. I set it last night at about 11 o'clock at night. I then had to come and close it all up again because of the rain at 2.30 in the morning. But I think we've got some things in here. Um, and as I peel this sheet back here, uh, you will um, see what a, a moth trap is. Um, it's essentially a lobster pot idea. Um, a very light, bright white, uh, bulb, light bulb under here. This is um, a mercury vapour bulb. Oh, look at that burnished brass there. Stunning moth. moth well. And a peppered moth, yeah. And a, a swallow prominent of one kind. Um, so that light, bright, bright bulb attracts all the moths. They um, try and bump into it, fall down into the, through the funnel there and then rest up in the egg boxes there and then uh, we can come through in the morning, check them all, uh, count them and let them go hopefully unharmed or usually unharmed. Um, and then who's under here? Oh, here's a couple of trickier ones. So we're, we're almost through the entire trap now and we've just come across a species that I've never seen before actually. So this is a box moth. So this was first recorded in the UK in I think 2007 over in Kent and it's thought that this was brought in accidentally um, as, a, as a sort of imported species and it is kind of ravaging box trees but actually it's really exciting for me to see this species so if you're interested in getting involved in moths there's so many really useful resources there's loads of books so there's um, guides like this lovely FSC guide here which has got some of the day flying moths and then there are two fantastic field guides so there's one for the um, the macro moths and we'll go into this in more detail in our uh, zoom sessions and one for the micro moths and there's also photo guides that you can use as well so you've got fantastic illustrations of all the species here micro moths are small but they're also very beautiful there's loads of online resources as well and if you're moth trapping it's always useful to have lots of pots with you because there's about 2,500 species so you can't keep all of those in your head so it's useful to be able to put some things in pots and then you can check them in all these books later.